In the past two videos of this project, we have swapped a 150cc 5-speed motorcycle engine onto this Yerf Dog go-kart. It drives fine, and it's a ton of fun, but the engine doesn't run right, and also a ton of other things are just really sketchy, such as electrical wire throttle, the clutch is kind of held on, the brakes are questionable, but mainly just the engine's not running right. It's acting lean, but it also might be low in compression, I'm not entirely sure. So we just need to go home and figure that stuff out. The purpose of this is just to de-sketchify this and make it somewhat safe to drive. Alright, so we're back home and uh, there is lots of problems with this thing that I did not mention in the beginning. And that is, for one, the carburetor leaks all over the place. The thing drips like a faucet and it also comes out the air filter and just leaves a huge puddle underneath the go-kart in half a second. Obviously that means the float has stuck and it's been kind of sticking on and off for a little while. Like Sometimes it'll just kind of sit there and drip out of the um, drain. But then my dad took it up the road and at the end of the road then all of a sudden the float totally stuck open and it started draining onto the road. So that was the end of that. But also, yeah, I mentioned the frame is not welded. The shifter, uh, it's not comfortable. It could use improvement. I want to put a shift knob on this thing. Um, I may be getting a viper head shift knob, like this big silver pimp viper thing and ooh. That would be cool on here. I want to make like a custom wiring harness with just the things that I need. I don't need like turn signals and headlights and brake light wires and all that sort of stuff. And I don't need that massive like 56 pin connector that goes to the rest of the wiring harness with the gauge cluster and all that. And I should be getting an actual exhaust pipe for this thing soon. Lincoln from Flaming Rays. I've done a collaboration with him before and I'm also doing the buggy build as a collaboration with him. His channel link is right up here in the corner. I encourage you to go check him out and drop him a subscribe. Also, if you haven't noticed, I put actual wheels on this thing. I got the new rim, put the new tire on it, and put these on here. So much better. With those giant tires, the gearing was so, so wrong. You couldn't even get into fifth gear because it was slower than fourth because it didn't have enough power to actually get you going. And it did almost 50 miles an hour in fourth with those. I don't know how fast it goes with this right now, but I'm assuming it's about where we want it, if not a little bit low. The steering is kind of iffy. It, like the steering wheel has like a ton of play in it, and also the pushing down here is like worn out, so it, it has a lot of play in the steering. Not to mention the alignment is totally out of whack. And also, whoever owned this thing before me did a lot of repairs on it, and their welds look nothing short of boogers. And I have no idea how well they're gonna hold. They look a little sketchy, so I'm gonna have to grind those off and redo those just for safety. And another thing I did not mention is the gas tank. It's duct taped. That's no good. So I don't really know what I'm gonna do with the gas tank because I, this is a gravity fed carburetor and I don't really wanna mount a gas tank like way the heck up here. I mean, I guess I could just build like some hoop thing, but I, I could mount a gas tank like down here in the frame and then use a pulse pump. I think I could use a pulse pump with this and that would run up to the carburetor. I just need to figure out some way to drive the pulse pump because I don't really see any crankcase vent that I could use. But now that I'm thinking about it, I might be able to just make a hoop that goes like up here next to the seat and back and mount a gas sink to that just without duct tape. But that is more than enough talking. Let's start with taking this engine out so that I can rebuild it and make it run right. <laughs> So we've got carburetor issues, lots of them, um, and it also apparently has low compression, which I did not know. That is not a good thing. So I'm going to pull the head and probably the jug, uh, check the ring gaps, make sure none of them are stuck, uh, lap the valves, check all the gaskets. I know that the valves are adjusted properly. I did those just a couple weeks ago. Um, but that's basically just the plan. I'm just going to pull all those top end stuff off and hopefully that fixes the problems.
That's gonna have to be cleaned. So there's something a little funky going on with this. There's slop in the piston, like a good amount of slop, but the piston looks great. Like there's no scoring on it at all. And same with the cylinder. It looks really, really nice and you can even still see the cross hatching. And in addition, the ring gap clearances are like perfect. It's right within spec, so I have no idea. I guess it's just supposed to be sloppy. I mean, it's a Chinese engine, but I don't know. So that's very interesting. When I initially discovered that the piston had slop in it, I thought, oh, well, that's going to be the reason why it doesn't have good compression, just leaking past. But then everything else leads to me, like, leads me to believe that it's supposed to be like that, I would say, because yeah, I was thinking maybe maybe it was bored out. Like someone bored it out and didn't put an oversized piston in it because nobody makes them. Um, but the rings are, the, the, the gaps are perfect, so I don't think this has been bored out. The bike only has 1,300 miles on it, so that would explain why it, they look great. So all I can think of is that that's just how it is. So now what I'm thinking is the source of the low compression could just be the valve's not seating right. So I'll lap those, and hopefully that'll help. Oh dear, I done leaked a little bit of oil. These are dual valve springs, so that's going to be a lot of fun to put back on. But it is like 10.40 at night, so I'm going to go to bed. about a week since I've seen you and that's because it was the end of the term for me with school and I was just desperately trying to pass my classes. Uh, it didn't work. But that means now we're back on this thing since the term ended today. Uh, and I'm sorry if it didn't show that much of me putting this thing back together. I had a friend over and we were just trying to get this thing back together as fast as we could so we could ride it because the sun was going down. We did get to ride it and it feels like the engine runs stronger than before. I have not done a compression test but it seems a lot better. And it just rained. Which means the grass is wet. I think you know where I'm going with this. So, um, I, we just put a return spring on this. That's the last thing we did, so the gas pedal is fine. It, it used to do that like surging thing because the pedal was just flopping all over the place, but it should be a lot better now. So, I want to take this out <laughs> and see what happens. Time, uh, you can definitely hear in that clip that absolute pop that oh it's horrible um, I don't know what's happening I know the engine has no compression there's absolutely no resistance when you push down on the thing 
I pulled the spark plug out right after it happened, and the piston's still moving up and down. I don't see any valve damage, so I don't think it dropped a valve. So it didn't like throw a rod or anything. Uh, I think it's up in the head, but I don't know what it is, and I'm a little bit concerned. I don't know if I want to take it apart. Um, so I guess we'll just pull off some of the covers and see if we can find out what went wrong. All right, I'm going to start off with the valve cap thingy here for the adjustment. I'm noticing is there's a lot of valve lash, but it didn't drop a valve. The valve is still there, I think. Yeah, the keeps are still there. I don't know what's going on with it having so much lash. I hope it didn't like snap the camshaft in half or something. We broke the timing chain. We're gonna see under here. So I'm gonna take this off. Oh, there's bolts right there. What? Oh, look at that. This, the gear is not connected and the bolts are right there. Looks like a little piece. Some pieces broke off of this. Oh, so there's, looks like there's two pieces that broke off, but only one of them is here. Do I want to run the engine with that in the crankcase? Probably not. I guess I can change the oil and just kind of hope that this comes out with it. At least the bolts are there, I guess. This doesn't have an O-ring. That's probably why I was running lean. Oh, good to know. Uh-oh. This valve is open. That's why it has a ton of lash. Well, totally bent a valve. Actually, we bent both valves, but this one turned into a banana. Among some other things that happened, uh, so that sucks, but it's fine. Because I bought new parts, and I'm going to blur out my address, because you guys don't need to see that, you little creepy gremlin. We got a whole new head unit. We got an entire new clutch rebuild kit with extras. I don't need this, but it was five bucks, so I got it anyway, because this engine is non-existent. I probably broke it. I thought I wasn't gonna be able to find any parts, but then I found this for 13 bucks and this for five bucks, and shipping, of course, was like six times more than that, but we got them anyway. That's what it's supposed to look like, and that's what we got. got a real exhaust for this thing that isn't that atrocious massive pipe from the other engine. I got this from my friend Lincoln with the YouTube channel Flaming Rays. Uh, if you haven't seen him, his link is right up here. Go check him out. Uh, but I just need to figure out how to put this on here somehow. I don't know. And then maybe I can figure out how to attach a muffler to it because this thing is louder than a jet. Get out of the hacking shot, you piece of adolescent. See this? That's stupid. It's even more stupid when you realize this engine is equipped with electric start. I got really tired of this really fast because that doesn't exactly have very much throw before it hits a bar. So I bought a freaking battery for it. Is this gonna be big enough? Does it have enough cranking amps? I have no idea. I went to the battery store and said, Give me a battery, but let's charge this up and see if it actually will turn this engine over. I was not aware of this until I got home, but this is one of those cool kinds where you have the acid separate and you have to install it, so I guess let's do that. I've never really done this before, so it'll be fine. The 
the guy at the battery store, yes, literally battery store, they sell nothing but batteries, told me that this should soak for about two hours, which would be the perfect amount of time for me to go fix my neighbor's ATV because I'm the repairman in the neighborhood, yes. So, uh, in order to attach the battery, uh, I need to figure out which wires come from the engine and charge the battery from the stator. Uh, I have no wiring, heart, wiring diagram, I have no manuals, I have no information on this whatsoever, so I just need to go poking around and figure out which one is uh, the alternator output. I know how to hook up the battery to the starter motor and I know how to work the solenoid, it's just I need to charge the battery too um, and I need to figure out how to get the power from the engine through the rectifier and into the battery, that's the hard part. But, Shouldn't be too hard, I just need to figure out how to do it. Well, I think I found a kill switch, but that's not exactly what I'm looking for. It's been another two months since I've uploaded, and yes, I have been working on this video for the entire two months and a little bit before, before part two was posted. I need to post this video now because if I wait any longer, pretty sure YouTube is gonna like delete all my subscribers because my upload schedule is less consistent than theories about how the dinosaurs died. But we did good, good work done on this thing. It turned out different than I originally thought it would be at the beginning of this video. I thought we'd be disketchifying, then we blew it up, had to rebuild it, now we're working on wiring. So. That happened, but it's fine because now we have electric start. That, I did not mean for that to happen. This thing just gets better and better and better the more I work on it. It's running way better. I don't, I don't, it, it starts up super easy apparently. I didn't know it did that, but it does. It has a dead spot when you hit the throttle for some reason. You need to get rid of that. I don't know what's causing that. Brakes just kind of broke in. They're a little better. Not still suck, but it's fine. Uh, the wiring looks like a rat's nest, but you know, nothing. Some zip ties and duct tape can't fix. The one thing that I absolutely hate and it needs to go away is a gas tank. I want to put a gas tank down in the other corner and then use a pulse pump. I think that would look the best. And also I like the look of just the engine without like a gas tank above it because it looks like almost like an engine cage. Like it just kind of gives that effect. And it like, it, I, I, it doesn't look like a go-kart. It looks like some sort of UTV or something. I don't like it. I have plenty of Predator gas tanks. I'm sure I could just take one of those and stick it down there and then figure out some way to drive the pulse pump. Also, I don't know if I've said this, but this is the seat for the buggy and this is the steering wheel that was going to be for the buggy, but now that I've drilled a hole in it and put a button in it, I'm probably gonna buy another one for the buggy. So eventually I'm gonna have to make uh, my own seat for this thing and I think it's just gonna be a real simple, you know, just go-kart seat. Can't be that hard, right? I mean, I did the seat for the mini bike. That wasn't too hard. Uh, the next upgrade thing that I would like to do to it is what I mentioned at the beginning of this video and that is shift knob. It needs a shift knob. It looks like crap. It's a stick. It's a suicide shifter. I hate it. It needs to be fixed. You know who you are. 
I need that viper head shift knob and put that thing on here. That would be awesome. And then I can call this thing the pimp viper and paint it sparkly colors and then wear a big giant pimp suit and a cane and, 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 and I guess drive around on Halloween. I don't know. What, what, are the, what am I supposed to do with this? But that is it for part three of the shifter cart build. Uh, uh, thank you for watching and uh, bye. Psych, you thought I would leave without saying something extraordinarily stupid and cringy and ruining your day. But you just don't know my content, do you? Someone please send help. Why anyone subscribes to me, I have no idea, but that's actually why I'm here today, because I just apparently hit 2,300 subscribers. I don't know when that happened, but it, look, look at that, look, look at that. It, 2310, when did that happen? I don't know why that happened. Why are you subscribing? But you did, so you're awesome. So I guess I'm just here to say thanks. That's, that's really epic. So now I'm making money off of this, which is cool because this is expensive. I don't know if you've noticed, this is really expensive to do. So now I'm making money off of ads. It's not much, but it helps. So the more you share this video with your friends, the more I will get paid, which equals more epic projects and maybe eventually fi finishing the buggy. That, that, would be, that would be really cool. But yeah, basically, 2310, 2,310 people have apparently liked this enough to click the subscribe button so that they actually watch more of this. This is brainless content. I don't know why anyone would wanna watch this, but you do, and that's why I love every single one of you. <laughs>